Hi, good morning Baycroft. Welcome to yet another day of bad weather, bad camera quality. Good news for you, you can't see me quite so well. Anyway, where were we? The Vikings, that's right, the Vikings. Okay, so yesterday we talked about how the Vikings came from Scandinavia in the far north, which was a tough place to survive, which meant they had to undoubtedly be tough people. But what else? we know about them? What did they look like? What did they sound like? Well, as you said yesterday, the Scand sorry, Scandinavia is made up of Sweden, Denmark and Norway. Now today, those countries have similar but different languages. In fact, people from those three different countries quite often speak in English to communicate with each other because it's a the language they all understand. But anyway, the Vikings spoke in Old Norse, a language which today is closest to Icelandic. In fact, the word Viking itself is an Old Norse word that means pirate raid. Viking is both a noun, which is a word that names something, and a verb or a doing word. So Vikings is what they were, but also what they did. And that's important because it tells us something key, and that's that the Vikings came from Scandinavia, but not all Scandinavians were Viking. And what's more, most Vikings weren't Vikings for most of the time. They were only Viking when they were Viking. Yeah, I know, I've confused myself too. But most Scandinavians, when they weren't being Vikings, were farmers and fishermen. In fact, one of the websites that I looked at said that being a Viking was a bit like taking a gap year. It was just something they did to get rich before they went back to pulling carrots out of the ground. Anyway in terms of how they look. Well, we would all like to believe that Vikings looks like this. Massive, scary, long-haired, cool, tailored, sorry, tattooed warriors. And they were, except they weren't. Well, well, kind of. It's really confusing because we just don't really know. I mean, let's have a look at tattoos, for example. There's hardly any evidence to suggest that Vikings had tattoos. There's only one piece of script which suggests, and it was written by an Arab trader, which suggests they had any decoration on their skin. Other than that, absolutely no evidence to say that Vikings had tattoos. What is a fact though, is that they were a big, strong race. Well, kind of. It's believed that the Viking diet consisted of lots of fresh vegetables and fish, which is a great diet for growing big and strong. Probably not so good for your breath or your windy pops, but you know. Anyway, what's more, they also lived very hard lives and spent a lot of time on hard physical labor. So there's every chance they would have been muscly and quite scary looking blokes. But that's because they lived 1300 years ago. If they lived today, they'd actually be considered pretty small. Studies of Viking bones shows that they were on average about five foot six. That's not a lot bigger than Miss Horsley. It's also pretty widely believed that nearly all Vikings had silly haircuts. They didn't have long, cool ponytails. But actually, the silly haircuts were for a scary reason. There's evidence to suggest that Scandinavian men may have had long hair. And that would have been for a practical reason. It would have been to keep their heads warm during their very cold winters. But when they went Viking, or on a raid, they shaved the back of their hair like this. Which, let's face it, is a lot less cool. But it's believed they did this to stop their hair getting caught in their armour when they were fighting. And that leads us on to what we're going to talk about tomorrow. As I mentioned the other day, there's very little that's actually known about Vikings because most of the stories that we have today were taken from something called the Icelandic sagas. The problem is, these sagas were written down hundreds of years after the Vikings actually existed. And so they were stories written by people hundreds of years later about things that happened or more likely didn't happen at all. But one thing we do know is that for their time, they were big, very tough, and they didn't fear dying. And they were also able to sail very long distances to far off lands. And it wasn't to pop along to make new friends. When the Vikings turned up to a new land, very often it meant bad news for those who were already living there. 
But that's more for tomorrow's discussion. Enjoy the rest of the broadcast and I'll see you at the end. Bonjour, comment ça va? So, today guys, we're going to be trying out some mountain climbers. Now, I've done this with you guys before on the channel, so you should be able to do them. But, just as a reminder, you're going to be in that plank position again, as we did on Monday. So like this, we're going to bring our knee up to our chest and back down. That will count as one mountain climber. We're going to be doing 30. Let's get to work. These can be nice and quick. But make sure you get that leg nice and high and back before the other one comes up. Okay, let's go. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 20, 30. There we are. That one done for today. See you again tomorrow for step number 4. Let's go. This week, Baycroft, we are looking at trust. Now, that made me think of one very special man. He's very wise, very old, and has a great beard. No, no, Mr. Mitchell, it's not you. No, the man that I was thinking about is this guy. And this is why. I've always prized myself on my ability to turn a phrase. Words are, in my not so humble opinion, our most inexhaustible source of magic. I want to thank you, Harry. You must have shown me real loyalty down in the chamber. I fashioned myself a new name, a name I knew wizards everywhere would one day fear to speak when I became the greatest sorcerer in the world. Albus Dumbledore is the greatest sorcerer in the world. Dumbledore is a great wizard, only a fool would question it. We both know Lord Voldemort has ordered the Malfoy boy to murder me. Trust me, I was chosen. But should he fail, and should presume the Dark Lord will turn to you? How dare you stand where he stood? Tell them how it happened that night. Please. Tell them how you looked him in the eye, a man who trusted you and killed him. Have I become a ruthless? You must be the one to kill me, Sirius. Trust me. Dumbledore trusted me to see this through. What makes you think you can trust him? Trust me. I trusted the man I knew. Forgive my mortishness, Harry. I'm an old man. You still look the same to me, son. It's not really the world. She sacrificed herself. Pity the living. What is he? And above all, all those who live without love. It is our choices that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. Our choices on who we trust and how we can be trusted by others. See you tomorrow. Why are you 
is there a crayon on my screen? You may be asking yourself. Well, it's not just because of our love for brightly coloured tubular wax sticks. Oh no. It is in fact because in 1903, these guys created the first Crayola crayons. Well, the first set that aren't toxic. Over the next 100 years, these evolved into what we now find in our schools and shops. Today's broadcast will link to this fantastically adaptable art media. Now, I could not even begin to talk about crayons without thinking about one of my favourite books. You might have read it as well. It's called The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew, Drew Daywalt. This book is about a box of coloured crayons that write letters to their owner, Duncan, with several problems and concerns they have. Here is a short extract. One day, in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on them. Hey Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of your other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out coloring fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. Dear Duncan, all right, listen. I love that I'm your favourite crayon for grapes, dragons and wizards hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous colour goes outside the lines. If you don't start colouring inside the lines soon, I'm going to completely lose it. Your very neat friend, Purple Crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I am neither. I am beige and I am proud. I'm also tired of being second place to Mr. Brown Crown. It's not fair that Brown Crown gets all the bears, ponies, and puppies, while the only things I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when was the last time you saw a kid excited about coloring wheat? Your beige friend, beige Crayon. Duncan, great crayon here. You're killing me. I know you love elephants, and I know that elephants are grey, but that's a lot of space to colour all by myself. And don't even get me started on your rhinos, hippos, and humpback whales. You know how tired I am after handling one of those things? Such big animals. Baby penguins are grey, you know. So are tiny rocks, pebbles. How about one of those once in a while to give me a break? Your very tired friend, Grey Crayon. Dear Duncan, you colour with me, but why? Most of the time I'm the same colour as the page you're using me on. White. If I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even in the rainbow. I'm only used to colour snow or filling empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, White Crayon. Hi, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things. Things that are covered in by other colours, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice beach ball and then fill the colours of the ball with all the other crayons. How about a black beach ball sometime? Is that too much to ask? Your friend, Black Crayon. Dear Duncan, as Green Crayon, I'm writing for two reasons. One is to say that I like my work. Loads of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs and frogs. I've no problems and wish to congratulate you on a very successful Colouring Things Green career so far. The second reason I write is for my friends, yellow crayon and orange crayon, who are no longer speaking to each other. Both crayons think they should be the colour of the sun. Please settle this soon because they're driving the rest of us crazy. Your happy friend, Green Crayon. Dear Duncan, yellow crayon here. 
I need you to tell Orange Crayon that I am the colour of the sun. I would tell him, but we are no longer speaking, and I can prove I am the colour of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to colour in the sun in your Happy Farm colouring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page 7. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on a field of yellow corn. Your pal and the true colour of the sun, Yellow Crayon. Dear Duncan, I see Yellow Crayon already talked to you, the big winger. Anyway, could you please tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the colour of the sun? I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know that I am clearly the colour of the sun. Because on Thursday, you used me to colour the sun on both the Monkey Island and the Meet the Zookeeper pages in your Day of the Zoo colouring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? <laughs> your pal and the real colour of the sun. Orange Crayon. If you want to read the rest of the book, click on the link in the comments section below. Now for some tasks. The first task you could have a go at is drawing an image using the different requests the crayons have made. So for example, drawing a picture that has a grey pebble in it rather than a giant grey rhino, or a beach ball that's entirely black. The second task you could have a go at is writing a reply from Duncan to one of the crayons, answering their requests and suggesting some alternatives. If you're feeling super creative, why not have a go at the third task of thinking of a new colour not included in the book and write a new letter from them, asking or complaining about a problem they can have. So maybe colours like turquoise or silver that aren't already in the book. Finally, there's an equally amazing follow-up book called The Day the Crowns Came Home. Have a watch of that, the link's in the comments section, and think about which one you prefer and why. Maybe you could even write a book review on your favourite one of the pair. As always, send in your work. I absolutely love seeing it and enjoy the rest of your crayon related challenges. Hello, Mrs. Renouf here, setting you your art challenge for today. So your art challenge is going to be based all around wax crayons and that's because on this day, the 10th of June 1903, a company was set up um, who made wax crayons and they called them Crayola and Crayola wax crayons are still going today. Now I'm going to set you your challenge which is using wax crayons. You should be able to get these quite easily. Um, I know some of you are still in strict lockdown, um, so you might have to see if you can borrow some or if you can find some. Oil pastels would work as well if you've got those in, in an art set. The other things you're going to need is um, ideally some thick um, white card. Um, other things you can use is just paper, um, or paper plates work really well for this as well, so something you can work on too. You're also going to need um, some black paint. Now, ideally a water-based paint, like a poster paint. Um, but if you haven't got that, you can use a black crayon um, or you could use acrylic paint. So we're going to be making um, scratch boards, which some of you might have used before. You can buy them um, in like craft shops. You can buy ready-made scratch boards where you scratch away the black surface um, to reveal the colors underneath. We're going to have a go um, at making your own. It's quite a nice process to do um, and you get to do two different kinds of art, one with the wax crayon and one scratching into it. So, um, I have raided my daughter's art sets and found um, a really nice set of Crayola crayons. Um, so I'm going to use these um, for my background colours and I'm actually going to get my daughters to help me do this. Um, you need to make sure that you cover the card completely and don't leave any gaps at all because you don't want the, pa the paint that you're going to put over the top to soak in. You want, want the wax to resist all of the paint. So you need to make sure you don't leave any gaps at all. You also need to press fairly hard to do this. Um, so if you um, are struggling to do that, you might need to ask a grown-up to go over your colours and press a little bit harder just to check that the card's completely covered. So you can use just one colour if you wanted to, although it's really, really nice to use a whole um, load of different colours.
is now dry so you saw how um, my daughters and I covered it in um, the Crayola wax crayons and then um, you saw how they applied um, the black paint really smoothly over the top of it all and it just took a couple of hours to dry it out so now it's ready to scratch into so I'm just going to show you a way of doing this now you can use all kinds of different things you can use like paper clips things like that um, there's all kinds of stuff you can use to scratch into it. I'm going to have a go um, just with a cocktail stick um, and see if I can remove the paint that way. Um, now I'm going to have a go at doing kind of like a natural picture um, and this is because the Year 10s are still working on the Natural Forms project and it might help them with some ideas but you can literally do anything you want. Now um, we can differentiate this to different abilities so we could just do some mark making and have a go with shapes, lines, um, zigzags and swirls, straight lines, curved lines um, and just do some patterns and marks in it and that would be great. Or you can have a go at doing a more complicated image if you want to. Um, so let's have a go and see what it looks like. starting to come through and I can see some of the colours appearing underneath. Now this is going to take me a bit of time to do so I'm going to um, go away and, have, and work on this and then I will show you um, the result once it's all completed. Hello again, I have finished my picture so I started off um, drawing a leaf and scratching into the paint um, and then my daughters came and had a go too so they are four and six. Um, they really enjoyed it and they had to go scratch off some of the paint as well and even my husband decided he wanted to draw a leaf on there as well so it's become a bit of a family collaborative piece um, so you might want to have a go at doing this with your family or you might want to do it all on your own um, so this is our final piece hope you like it so you can see we've got loads of different shaped leaves we did a little bit of research and had a look at some leaf shapes to help us um, and we tried to get some texture and pattern on some of them as well um, and you can see the colours coming through from underneath. We're really pleased with it. So if you can have a go, that'd be brilliant. And send your pictures in to the home learning link, which should come up on the screen. Um, I've also um, got some other ideas um, that are going to come up for you to have a look at, um, to think about what you might do your scratch picture about. So underwater pictures work really nicely. Like I said, you can just do patterns and shapes. Um, you can do whatever you want at all, it's fine. We just want you to have a go if possible. Um, and one more thing that we're going to offer a house point for is when I tidied away the wax crayons, I found this one. Now, this one's been peeled, which is fine because sometimes you need to peel them to, to be able to use them as they, they, um, they run out. Um, but it does mean that I don't know the name and I'd like to know the name. So your challenge for an extra house point is the person that can tell me the best name for this yellow crayon, but not yellow, it's got to be something really good, is going to get an extra house point. So house points for having a go at doing a scratch picture, house points for coming up with an amazing name for this crayon. Have a fantastic day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye. Yesterday's sign was hot. Today's sign is sun. Sun.
Hello again, Baycroft. Have you enjoyed today's broadcast? Hopefully you have, which means you'll be tuning back in tomorrow morning for some more from us. In the meantime, enjoy your day, be kind to each other, stay safe, be nice to your parents and carers, all of you, and we'll speak tomorrow.